coffee time. Hooray! Who knows? Might get might get more than two hundred views this time, eh? Would you reckon? Let's just kill. Let's just kill it. The thing about YouTube, right? Is it's got. I was looking. I'm looking at stats. Don't never look at stats. It's not about your subscribers. Subscribers are just useless. It's about um, the traffic now. Is all about where they, you know, when they put it in suggestions. And all my traffic is from suggestions and not from subscribers. Because obviously my subscribers are only here for Pink Floyd, and I'm not giving them that. But hey, here we go. So it's, yeah, it's, it's coffee time, and we can look at the news. Um, they've identified patient zero in the uh, avian flu outbreak that's happened yes there was a an avian flu outbreak in devon and they found patient zero he went by the name of uh, alan gosling sorry he's all right he didn't die but um uh, this was in Bus buck fastly in devon uh, alan gosling we got his picture here we go he's not looking happy he's not looking happy because there he is. Whoops, that's a picture of a dog. What that? I've lost. Oh no, I've lost the. I've lost my picture now. Where was it? I've got too many windows open. That's the problem. Here we go. Here we go. That's Alan Gosling. It's quite funny. Uh, Gosling. Gosling. Why is it funny? Because Alan Gosling, right? He got identified as having avian flu. And it was a, a version of was it H H five N one? They got such catchy names um, because when they got there, he was uh, yeah, he was living with over a hundred ducks, twenty of them, and these were in twenty he had twenty Muscovy ducks in his actual home, um, and there is a picture. Again, there's, there's varying reports. When they say 100, here, this is, there's 160 on the caption. This is what a Muscovy duck looks like. Just like that. There you go. But it says, uh, yeah, he has. He, he was looking after 160 Muscovy ducks at his home. But I think he had 20 of them actually living inside. So it's quite obvious. Ducks, Gosling, Gosling, ducks, avian flu. You make the jokes up. You, you make the jokes up. Um, so, yeah. I think he's a bit of a wally, really. He's one of, obviously one of those Mr. Trebus. Who remembers Mr. Trebus? He's one of those Mr. Trebus characters. That, um, yeah, that, yeah. But at least you know that. At least he, he wasn't eating bats. He was just living with ducks. <laughs> yeah. Here's, a, here's one for you. This is the story of Abby Diamond. She's uh, 19 and from Edinburgh. And she's, a, she's an avid show jumper. Um, but she had a fall. She fell off her horse, and um, well, steady, 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 steady yourself. Sit down. If you if you're not sitting down, have a sit down because she fell from a horse without wearing a helmet, and uh, ended up looking like this. She needed seventeen stitches across her well, her nose and eyebrow region there, and uh, two black eyes, and that's because she fell from a horse without wearing a helmet. And here she is in happier times, um, enjoying the uh, enjoying the horse. And here she is, glamming it up. There you go. There you go. So there you go. Don't fall off your horse without a helmet. I think there's a lesson there for everyone, isn't there? Really. I mean, it's a bit much, isn't it? It's a bit. It's a bit much. <laughs> That's like, oh dear. Apparently, they, they're having an inquiry into the. Uh, the Edward Colston verdict, yeah, <laughs> because the vandals got acquitted, got acquitted of the of, the, of their crimes. Um, there's going to be, they're going to look into. <laughs> they're going to look into how juries are are, are, are um, not coached. Coached isn't the right word. How, how, how juries are uh, introduced to the crime, so they understand understand you know what the crimes are. We knew what the crime was. They knocked down a statue and they threw it in the river. 
but they're going to go at the, at the court they go all right love now this trial is a shoplifter that doesn't mean he lifts shops it means he steals things from shops without paying dear do you understand that's what it's going to be like it's the um, it's further evidence that we live in the idiot nation. No, the people understood what went on, and people knew that, you know, rightly so, people are upset for, crikey, at least 30 years they've been raising petitions and trying to get, you know, get the statues taken down. And, uh, yeah, for once, common sense, you know, went inside. Yeah, it weren't right what they did. I don't think it was necessarily a right thing, but they had no other option, did they? Um, so, yeah, there we go. And old... Uh, Novax and Djokovic um, is still in. <laughs> he's still waiting, but I reckon it could take weeks for his legal legal team to get him out. He could be, he could be, he could be playing the Australia Open within weeks. But um, it's a really. Uh, actually, we can just get faxed now, shouldn't we? Really, be, be, be the best idea. Unless you don't like Big Pharma. A lot of people say to me, oh, oh, Big Pharma. A lot of people, one person. One person in the comments of it. And you go, yeah, right. How do you think you've lived so long? Wasn't luck, you know. It was science that's got you this far. Well done. Well done. Meanwhile, in Paraguay, oh, don't go for a swim in Paraguay. Um... They've found four swimmers have been mauled by piranhas in a spate of attacks. Um, and, well, this is... Uh, I don't know if it's the actual... But look, they, they blurred the picture out. This, this is uh, this is someone who's like, look, been bitten by a piranha. And of course, you know, the piranha, he's got lots of teeth. Very sharp teeth. He looks like that. He's a lovely looking chap. Mind you, if you were being held like that, you'd, you'd look that angry, wouldn't you? You'd go, oh. But I always remember as a kid being terrified of, of piranha. You do, didn't you? <laughs> but they very rarely attack humans, apparently. This is the thing. Um, but when the, when the fish are going through their reproductive cycle in the summer, that's when they can get a little bit frisky. Little bit frisky, Whew. Whew. Not not good, not good. But stick a plaster on it. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Meanwhile, a publican who was wrongly jailed. This is this is a complicated story. This is um, this is the story of Jeffrey Jeffrey Monks, who ran the Snooty Fox in Kettering, Northamptonshire. He was accused, falsely accused, I might add, of breaking food safety laws. Um, uh, back in 1999 and it was because there was a vendetta <laughs> um, a vendetta over a bottle of wine yeah 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 the local he reckons the local council had a vendetta against him um, and he was constantly being harassed by the local council for various infractions of the the food safety laws from East, East Northamptonshire Council. Here's Mr. Monks himself. Here he is. He doesn't look like somebody who's going to poison you. Well, he's, he's settled. He's settled. A seven-figure sum. Which is getting... It's been kept private, but they reckon it could be in the region of 14 million quid. Um... Uh, because he launched a high court battle over his wrongful convictions and loss of earnings for the snooty fox. And it all began, it was 25 years, began in 1998, when he barred solicitor Jenny Lawrence from the snooty fox after she was reportedly furious after being served the wrong bottle of wine. And since then, you know, her and the council um, were on his back. But wow, 14 million. 14 million quid. Yeah. And this is what he looked like back in back in the day <laughs> before this all happened. Look, this is him back when that happened. Boy, it's aged him, isn't it? 
But anyway, that's good. That's good news to, to hear. Meanwhile, Randy Andy is trying to sell his ski chalet for 17 million quid because he reckons he can buy um, uh, uh, Virginia Giffrey Roberts. He reckons he can buy her off, but she's saying no. So yeah, anyone if anyone wants a, a, a cheap Swiss chalet, uh, Andy's got one going. So there you go. I think that's enough fun. Oh no, I've got one story left. It's a dog story. Because I know you like the dog stories. Do you like dog stories? Yeah, you love the dog stories. This is the story of a, f- uh, of a, of a dog called Junebug. Right? And Junebug <laughs> has been scaring the locals. And uh, I'm going to show you the picture. You Again, sit down. This is a real dog. Because I've got to show you a different picture. But this is a real dog. But you can see why it's scaring the neighbours. <laughs> it's like something from a horror film. Um, but the little dog doesn't look that bad, he said. Look, because normally it looks like that. <laughs> it's just when they're peeping over the over the fence, it can be a little bit helpful. But she's got the old uh, got the old uh, David Bowie eye going on there. She's got two coloured eyes. Lovely looking creature, but uh, terrifying to the locals. Poor old Junebug. Totally misunderstood. Ah, Anyway, let's see if there's anyone in the chat room. Uh, Jenny's in. Jogfik is being detained probably in a luxury hotel. His mum said he's being treated badly. I'd like to imagine that he's being fed on pot noodles and he's having to wash his underpants in the sink. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Doubt it, though. Look. Oh, come on. He's somebody that travels the world. He has he has a duty to public health. You know, you know. It's not like me and you who go. You know, goes. To, I don't go to the supermarket. I have my. I'm, I don't. I don't mix with the hoi polloi. I have my groceries delivered. But you know, the rest of us we go to the supermarket and and back home and and that's it. But he's traveling the world. He could be a, a blooming super spreader, couldn't he? And it's always the rich that do this. The rich, the rich and the entitled that fly around the world spreading this stuff. The rock stars, the doctors, you know, the politicians. And it's Aunt Gladys, who hasn't been to the end of the street in 20 years, who ends up copying it and, and you know, popping off this mortal coil. All because of the likes of him. You know, it's irresponsible. And if you come at me and go, oh, big farmer. Yeah, OK, get a life for a start. Get a life because you know the only reason you're here now, living and breathing, is because of med, you know, med- medical science. Because a hundred years ago, you're, you'd have, you'd have been lucky to get to thirty-eight, right? So that's it. That's the universal symbol for go away. Daniel says, "Good morning, Darren." Well, I don't agree with the statue commemorating Colston. Criminal damage is criminal damage, even if it comes under the right to protest. Eh. Eh, I don't know. I, again, I don't really care because I don't like statues. And when you've got uh, a lot of people, and the funny thing is, is the people that toppled the statue were those terrible white people. You know, they did a all a great duty. I think. I think they did a all a great duty because it was the black community that were again harmed by this imagine walking past someone every day that you know has been responsible for again slavery was a terrible thing but then i can go and say that we've all been all been slaves at one point you know economic slaves uh crikey had the pyramids get built who built adrian's wall eh? um you know culturally slavery has been a big thing in this world um for a very very long time but when we put up statues celebrating these people it's problematic, isn't it? And times move on. Now, I know the people of Bristol, for at least, like I say, 25 years I've been aware of it, have been campaigning and doing you know, petitions to, to you know, reevaluate the impact that Colston had on Bristol. Now, yeah, he put all his money into Bristol and he invested in it and you know, built you know, buildings and schools and whatnot. But it was dirty money, you know. That's the, that's the real problem. The, the money came from a bad place. You can't make that money good. And, you know, that's why people are upset. And I think we can be in danger of forgetting our past. And whilst, you know, we shouldn't all, you know, have responsibility what's gone, because I, have, I, have, I, don't, I don't think I've ever kept any slaves, <laughs> except the missus. Where's my sandwich? Um, I think, you know, we have to be progressive to a certain extent. And I think, you know, times change. And 
do we want statues up of of like the likes of Colston? Do we want statues up of generals and majors who are responsible for you know the deaths of you know thousands and thousands of men, you know women? You know? No, we don't want to celebrate those people. We want to celebrate the good people. We want to celebrate the scientists and the nurses and the teachers of this world, not the slave traders and the and the warmongers. Do we? Do we? Let's let's be positive. Let's have a positive spin on the world. You know? So nah, in this, in the, again, if it was, hey, look, if it was criminal damage, they'd have been found guilty. You know, the the jury found them, you know, innocent and acquitted them. So that's the law. Uh, Jenny Smith says, having some work done. Nah, not here. There's lots. There's always something going on. The flats over there, over that way. They've been working on one flat for about six months. I think they're really. It's only. It's only a. Well, it's not even a one-bedroom flat. It's it's got a room, it's got a toilet, and it's got a kitchen. But they've been working on it for about six months. So I don't know what they're doing. I think they're you know, I think they're just like I say, eking it out. But it's not it's not not me, not me, Gov. Pegasus says, "How's my groove been?" Oh, I was a little bit depressed earlier, but I thought I'd try and uh, kick myself up the arse, as it were. Daniel says, uh, oh, "Do we talk much about the Russian player who's vaccinated with the Sputnik vaccine, which the Australian government haven't approved?" Yeah, we talk about them. And that's a, we can talk about them if you want. Um, they've got a vaccine that isn't approved by the Australian government. And that's their right. That's the government. If, again, it's a public health issue. Um, the Sputnik vaccine, there's a little bit of a, you know, is it any good? It's like some of the vaccines that are out of South America. You know, that's what's supposed to have been responsible for, for the death of the singer from that band, Il Devo. Um, his missus reckons that if he'd have had his, his shot done in Europe, he'd still be here. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of debate on whether these shots are, you know, valid a lot. Now we know, looking at the figures in the UK, that the vaccinations are stopping people from from dying. They're stopping people from ending up in hospital. You know, the vaccination scheme appears medically to have a bit of of work. So the the gamble seems to have paid off. However, again. These viruses, once they've been through our combined systems, our, our immune systems, we get weakened anyway. That's just how viruses work, with the exceptions of you know stuff like Ebola. But you know, um, these kind of viruses, they do get weakened over time, and the um, vaccination scheme has accelerated that weakening. So something that may have taken four or five years to have weakened naturally has been accelerated to like two years which is frankly brilliant you know and i do believe we're coming out we're coming out the other side of it so that's a really positive thing so <laughs> anti-vax yeah oh anti-vax alex says morning morning alex jenny says judge vic is a vaccine skeptic he's on rex all the same he's undecided about the whole issue i hope he gets sent home yeah me too again i think he's wholly irresponsible i think everybody that pushes that narrative you know, need to think back to the likes of, you know, polio and, you know, rubella and all these things that, you know, have blighted us. Tuberculosis, you know, crikey. I remember having the TB shot done when I was a teenager and there was maybe one kid who couldn't have it done because, I don't know, I think it was a religious issue. But the whole school lined up. I remember us lining up, up and down the corridors, all, in, all getting it done because we thought it was, do you know what? Science. It was the right thing to do. And even then, we could have got ill. We were warned, you might get ill. You could die, you know, because every vaccine, there is a risk. Everything you do, there's an inherent risk. Putting your trousers on in the morning, you could put two legs in one hole, fall over, hit your head on the dresser, you know, good night, Vienna, you know. But hey, people don't think like that. They worry about um, something that could actually prolong their life. There you go. Don't worry about their trousers. Ban trousers, that's what I say. More importantly, ban slippers. Slippers are evil. Anyway, it's been fun. It's been fun. I hope you've enjoyed the news. Um, and uh, we'll do this all again soon. Uh, don't forget, uh, drink it up. Oh, 150 of you that might watch this. Ta-ta.